Hello and welcome to EL Lesson 16. We are really moving along. So today we are going to be reading a story. But before we read the story, I would like to read a poem for you. Now the story we're going to read is called Stone Girl, Bone Girl. And as you know, we're learning about fossils and paleontologists. This is a poem I would like to share with you. It's called She Sells Sea Shells, which is kind of like a tongue twister. Say that 10 times. She sells she sea shells. Let me write that out for you. She sells she sea shells. It's very tough to say over and over. Some so sounds are tricky to say. Um, they just start to sound funny. Okay. Here we go. She, you have to say it slowly, sells sea shells. Can you say it with me? She sells sea shells. Again, she sells sea shells. Tough to say fast. All right, here's the poem. I'll try not to mess it up because it is a tongue twister. She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells that she sells are seashells, I'm sure. So if she sells she seashells on the seashore, I'm sure that the shells are she sure shells. Now that is really tough. That is a tough poem. And here it is. Let's try it one more time. She sells seashells by the seashore. Now you say it. She sells she shells by the seashore. The shells that she sells are she shells, I'm sure. So if she sells seashells on the she shore, I'm sure that the shells are she shore shells. Oh gosh, make this poem end. Oh my goodness. Okay, so the story is connected to the poem. What do you think the story is going to be about? Stone girl, bone girl. Hmm. Here's the, the cover of the book we're gonna read. What do you notice about the cover of the book? What do you notice? What do you see? I see a girl, I see dinosaurs, dolphins. Huh, what do you think might happen in the story? Let's take a look. We're gonna start the story now. We're not gonna read all of the story today, but we will begin the story today. We're gonna to find out where the story takes place and what it's mainly about. Here we go. Stone Girl, Bone Girl, a story of Mary Anning by Lyme Regis. I'm sorry, Stone Girl, Bone Girl, a story of Mary Anning of Lyme Regis. Oh, that is a place. When Mary Anning was a baby, she was struck by lightning. It split elm, it split an elm tree and threw Mary right out of her, the nurse's arms. Her father was in his carpenter's shop when he heard the terrible news. Now to be struck by lightning is very, very rare. Wow, but it happened to her. He dropped his hammer and ran through the stormy streets of Lyme Regis. Now this is actually in England by the seashore. Gently he lifted the limp body of his little daughter and his tears flowed like rain. But then an extraordinary thing happened. Mary Anning slowly opened her eyes. She reached out a tiny hand and touched the amazed face of her father. And the little girl began to smile. It was then her father realized Mary Anning was no ordinary girl. No, she wasn't. To survive that as a little child is very, very, and to be struck by lightning in the first place. Wow. 
The years rolled by like waves. Mary grew into a clever girl, a mind as quick as lightning, her mother teased. Mary had few friends except her father, whom she adored. And here's a picture of them. Wow, what do you notice in this picture? Look at where the house is. Now, Lyme Regis is on the seashore, so they they live on the cliffs, on cliffs. And so it sounds like her father and her are very close. Like everyone else in town, she called her dad Pepper because of his speckled beard. One Saturday, Pepper closed his workshop early. He took Mary down to the cliffs by the crashing sea. She held tightly to his hand because she knew how dangerous it could be. The clay cliffs at Lyme Regis are soft as melting chocolate. Mary had sometimes seen huge slabs of land slipping and tumbling to the beach below. Oh, so that is what the picture shows. They live so close to the ocean on cliffs that sometimes it, they're, that it can fall, that the homes can slip into the water. Pepper had stories of whole fields on the cliff tops which had disappeared beneath the feet of grazing cattle. He knew a place, he said, where half a farmhouse sat balanced on the cliff edge. He and his quarryman friend had peered over and seen the remains of the kitchen and even the garden gate smashed to splinters on the rocks below. Wow. So they really, really live close to the water. When they came to the place called Black Ven, Pepper reached into his pocket and to Mary's surprise, took out his best steel hammer. He knelt beside a large rock of dried clay and began carefully tapping away. What are you looking for? Asked Mary, dancing about on the sand. Just be patient, laughs, laughs, laughed Pepper. That's what she calls her dad. Now he's using a tool and he's looking in the ground for something. Is it the ground or the cliffs? Let's see. Oh, in a rock. Mary bent closer. He worked carefully as if he were making a fine piece of furniture. There was something hidden in there right inside the rock. At last, Pepper pulled it free and handed the thing to Mary. It, it's a treasure, she gasped. It's what we call a little snake stone, smiled Pepper. Just a curiosity, a present for you, Mary girl. It was the most beautiful thing Mary had ever seen. Back in the workshop, Pepper polished the snake stone and hung it on a string for Mary, like a perfect necklace. That night, Mary couldn't sleep. Her head swirled with thoughts like the twisting golden stone. The cliffs are full of treasure, she whispered over and over again. Oh, so they were in the, so on the cliff edge where the land meets the ocean, okay? And you can see that in the picture there where her dad Pepper is digging and he found some sort of a rock or a treasure in the rock. Very cool. From that moment on, Mary had spent every spare moment searching for the curiosities, treasures. She had sharp eyes and found them everywhere in every shape and size tiny shiny ones, marble ones as big as millstones, others straight as stone fingers or delicate like plants. Pepper taught her their strange magical names, thunderbolts, fairy hearts, crocodile's teeth, devil's toenails. He let Mary have her own special drawer in the workshop for her collection but the other children laughed and teased when they saw Mary hunting near the cliffs. Hmm. Someone made up a rhyme, stone girl, bone girl, out on your own girl, until Mary ran crying to Pepper. Now, that's where they got the title because they used to call her that. That winter was the wettest and stormiest the town had known. Great waves smashed the little houses in the cliffs and the cliffs became softer and more dangerous. When the water gets into the sides of the mountain cliffs, it could fall into the ocean. So Mary stayed away. The cold, damp air made Pip Pepper feel ill. He looked old and tired. He coughed so loudly that Mary felt afraid. 
Oh no. We're going to stop right there and we will read more next time. But you're going to need your purple module book and your assignment is to take a look at page 70. There are three questions on page 70. Number one, what is the setting of the story? Where does the story take place? A, the cliffs of Lyme Regis. B, Mary's backyard or C, a desert. You choose one of these answers. Question number two, what is this story mostly about? A, a girl who likes to watch the waves. B, a girl who likes to walk on the beach. Or C, a girl who likes to search for fossils. Three, what big discovery does Mary Awning make? Now, we don't know this answer yet because we have not read. So you really only have to look at these first two questions. And you know what, if you don't even know this one yet, because we haven't read most of the story, but you can make a prediction what you think it's mostly about so far, the waves, the beach, or fossils. And remember what I told you we're studying about, that could be a hint to the answer. So this is page 70, all right? Thank you for joining me, second graders, and I will see you next time.